Hey everybody, it's Douglas Scott McCarran again with another one of my personal shares. This is going to be a little bit different because it's actually more about making movies than about what went on inside of me. But I wanted to share it with you because it's what I do. I make home web series and movies and shoot these. And uh, for those of you who make movies, you might find this kind of interesting. It has to do with getting a steady shot. Now, I don't know, I'm sure all you movie makers know about this. For those of you who watch it, if you have a steady shot where they're like holding the camera, pointing at somebody, and the camera's doing this, people kind of bounce around on the screen. It looks really hacky. Now, usually what happens to get around this is you use a tripod, which keeps it nice and flat. But it has kind of a stale stillness that kind of looks a little bit odd, so you kind of like have to cut back and forth because it kind of looks a little boring. Like right now, you know, I'm, I'm a wonderful guy, but this steady shot that you got here is coming off of a tripod. Now, there's a more current uh, way of doing things where they try and kind of make the camera move around, so it's kind of like you're a little fly on the wall watching this and kind of like, you know, we all move our heads so things move around. So it's supposed to look more natural. I don't know if it does, but it's what is kind of going on these days. Um, so anyway, you can get a, it's called a stabilizer. And they can run anywhere from $70 to tens of thousands of dollars. Tens of thousands of dollar ones, they use them in Hollywood. They are programmable. You can make them zoom in and up and down and spin around. And usually you rent those from somebody who has one. But it can get quite costly. And I personally don't have tens of thousands of dollars laying around to do that. You can also get these hand stablers. You may see them like if you watch football or what we in America call soccer, or things like that when someone scores a goal. And you may see some guy run off to the side of this little, it's got a little pole and he's got a camera on it. And he's like, Zooming in, and then suddenly you have the the shot of all the, the players celebrating. That thing he's holding is called a stabilizer. The thing is, it takes a long time to get them balanced because you have the weight of the camera, and then if you, like, say, attach an electric cord to it, that kind of changes the weight and the dynamics. And you're just kind of constantly struggling with it to keep it flat. Um, and I didn't feel like spending a lot of time doing that. So like, I was trying to find another simpler way. And I came across a couple of videos on YouTube where the people recommend using the strap that you have from a camera on your camera, you put it around your neck. So that's one point of stabilization. And then your two hands come out and that's one and two on the other side. So you get three points. It helps make it more stable. Kind of keep your arms together instead of having your hand or your arms up against your side instead of having your hands floating out in space, and it just stabilizes things more. If your hands are out in space, they just sort of naturally move around, and, you know, the camera sees whatever is moving around, and it all gets into the, uh, the scene. Yeah, again, there are also tripods, which keeps things nice and steady, which is what I'm using here. But I was trying to figure out how to do this, because I have a camcorder. I don't have a camera. And my camcorder doesn't have the place to hook on the neck strap. So I came up with this. This is a, I went and got I like a four feet piece of metal that has all these holes in it. And then I have all these little, you can see like little eye hook things, washers on each side, nuts on each side, and by attaching my camera to this thing, I now can flip this over my neck and have the support of it. And also, instead of holding my camera in here, which is one possibility, you also have the possibility of holding it out here, which gives a little bit more float feeling, and yet it's still fairly stable. I have another version here, um, slightly different hardware, the reason they're different is simply I didn't feel like buying more hardware and I had this. So I ended up spending maybe 
I think it was about seven bucks on the bar. And I got three of these out of it. And then maybe three or more, three more bucks for the screws and the nuts and the washers. So fairly good. Um, put that down there. So it shoots actually pretty stable. The main thing is you can't move fast. Like you can't run after somebody with this because your feet will be bouncing on the ground and the camera will be bouncing along with it. That is one of the advantage of some of the stabilizers if you can get them stabilized. There's even one out there, I can't even remember the whole name, it's something cross where it has a magnet on the bottom. Um, one of the problems with hand stabilizers, if you come around like this, the camera kind of, it's like it stays behind until you stop and then it kind of goes over like that. This thing has a magnet on it and apparently keeps it pretty well lined up. It was around, I've seen $150 ones and $200 ones. But, you know, this was uh, $11. So it worked out pretty well. I happen to have the camera belt. One of them is actually from a carrying case and then this happened to be from a camera that a friend gave me, so, you know, score. Um, so I had an assistant shoot some of this, and I'm not going to put in really jerky stuff like you normally get. I'm just going to have the one where she shoots it. I'm going to show how she walks around. You can see a little bit of jerk. I put on some stabilization, and you can see it smooths out really nicely. And then I went back and took out the original audio and put in some, you know, music and sounds and stuff just to, for the heck of it, because I make movies. Uh, for those of you who don't know what stabilization is, the, uh, that's where if the camera's kind of doing this, like say this is my finger, it's steady, but the camera sees this. It tries to analyze where my fingertip is and try and keep it steady in the frame. Well, as it's moving around, it's moving all the other stuff that's around. And if it gets too erratic, it starts warping the, the way the video looks. Uh, some people call it buttery, some people call it watery. But you end up with a really ugly looking video. So when I'm talking about stabilization, because it's going slower, because we got this instead of the normal, like my footfall jerking, whenever your foot hits the ground, a concussion comes up through your body and hits the camera. You know, by holding this properly, having my elbows against my body and moving slowly, it reduces a lot of the jerkiness. So when I run stabilization, it actually looks very smooth and clean. So I'm going to stop now and then I'll put on the, uh, the video from her walking with this and then stabilization. And then I'm going to change the sound out just because I'm a movie maker. So I hope you found this interesting, and I hope you found it useful if you're a movie maker. Uh, you know, 11 bucks is a lot better than 200 I, th I think. All right, thank you very much, and until next time, this is, this is Douglas Scott McCarran. Bye. See that? Yeah. All right, so here we are. We're testing the, using the floaty thing and the wires to see if, Erica falls over or not. I hope not because I don't want to have to pay insurance or break any of my equipment. Um, the wire seems to stay out of her way. The cord seems to stay out of her way. Yeah, that seems to work pretty well. That kind of surprised me. Hey there. Ready? Ready. Three, two, one, action.